Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, this is Michael Traven's RV Center here to congratulate you on your purchase of your J Feather Micro 166 FBS travel trailer. I'm here to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things, get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. Main thing I need you to take into consideration is your slide. Once you've got that out, get a good eye for that, how much room you're going to need for that slide to come in and out unhindered, and leave yourself a walking path behind it. Then I want you to think about where your power and water connection is going to be. Those are going to be on your off camp side or your driver's side of your tow vehicle all the way at the rear. So park accordingly so you can utilize the facilities at the campsite. If you unhook your hitch, first thing you're going to do is level your unit. The power tongue jack here with the night docking light. Simply lower or raise your unit. And should you lose power, you have a manual override crank right there with a hand crank to bring this up and down if you don't have power. Speaking of power, check your battery post when you arrive. Make sure you haven't wiggled those terminals loose as you're bouncing down the road. Once we get our unit level, next thing we do is stabilize it. On all four corners of the unit, you have stabilizing jacks and a hand crank. So we put that in there and hand crank these down. Now you can use an impact driver or a drill gun and run these down in just a matter of seconds. But what, if you do that, I recommend you slow down when you get to the bottom. Because all you want to do is bring these down taut. Your unit's already level. You just want to put down some jack pads. Uh, that'll protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from dirt and debris and hot blacktop in the summer and keep them from sinking. Put them down and just run these down until you receive any type of resistance on your, on your uh, bolt here. You just stabilize the unit. Once you got all four of those down, we can go ahead and hook up our power and water. Come over here on your off-camp side, or the rear is your power cord. Now the way these new power cords go on, they go in at a little angle. Once they're in, twist it to the right, and then lock on your black washer. 30 amp service, should you need at the end of that 30, is a 30 to 110 adapter if you need to plug in at home. Got our power hooked up, let's hook up our water. City water connection. First and foremost, your water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is gonna reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in your unit. Always use this when putting water into your city water connector black tank flush. Hook that up, hook your hose up, but don't turn your hose on yet. Pull it down here to your hot water heater. All we're gonna do at this point is make sure we have returned our drain plug. All right, so let me get this open. Got to line up just right over here. There it goes. Your door, your door comes right off. So our drain plug. Put that back in there. I recommend plumber's tape, not putty. Putty will get stuck in there. Put that in there nice and tight. Then you can go ahead and turn on your hose. Go inside, open up your water tap. Once the water's coming out of there, you know your hot water heater is full and you can turn it on from inside. There is an on-off electric element here. It's set to off because the only time you should ever use this, turn it on here as well as indoors, is if you're using 110. Resets. Hot water heater doesn't seem to be working. Come out here and look. It's maybe bubbled out. You press it back in and say reset. Now let's say we're going to go camping and we're not going to use city water. We're going to go dry docking. In that case, you're gonna come over here, 
to your campsite, just the right of your doorway, to your potable water. Simply open this up and fill it with a hose. No need for the water pressure regulator. Two ways to tell when it's full. There is a overflow valve right there. Or inside where you check your tank levels, hold your fresh water button down, and that'll tell you when this is full. Just remember, when using potable water is when you're going to want to turn on your water pump. Don't turn on your pump. If you're using city water, it's already pressurized, and you don't need that. All right, we're all set up to camp. Let me go ahead and walk you around the rest of the unit. We'll open your door when we go inside. We have this light that'll light up underneath your steps. Out here, your outdoor speakers, a vent for your microwave, one tent and cable if you want to bring a TV out here. Again, your potable water, your grill holder, quick connect LP right here, and there's the other end that plugs in right there. Okay. This whole thing just pulls right off here. See if I can show you. This may work. So lift that up. And then just pull this piece out. That's how that one go in there. The outdoor fridge. Plugs in back there. Your pass-through storage with all of your hitch work. There's a cover for your propane tanks. The hand crank for your manual jack, or for your power tongue jack. Your propane is on your regulator. Set it in the middle, open them both up, and it'll automatically switch over when one's empty. It's also prepped for solar. You can hook a solar panel here and it'll trickle charge your batteries. Remember, these are not a step. Hot water heater, the other side of your pass-through storage. Low point drain for your potable water. Back here, your black and gray holding tanks. Outdoor shower. City water connect. Black tank flush, we'll talk about when leaving the campsite. And there's where your cable throws in. Back of your unit, your spare tire. And a ladder to go up and check your seams. Caulk as needed. Maintain your roof. Units also prep for a Furion backup camera. This is access to the back of your fridge. This is a flue for your furnace, so if you're running your furnace, steer clear of that, that will get hot. Let's head up inside. So to show you how to bring these doors down, first make sure your exterior door is all the way open. Push down on this button and pull this over. This has to be over in order to bring the whole door down. Remove that one and just uh, your step down. Now your legs are adjustable. Coming up inside the unit, first thing I'm going to do is turn on some lights. Now I'm going to start back down here on the ground. I'd like everyone to know where the fire extinguisher is. Make sure that you and everyone is camping with you knows the fire extinguisher is located by the entry doorway in case of an emergency. Immediately to the left of that on the floor is your access panel to your breakers and fuse box. Coming inside, these are called a slam lock for a reason. They work best when slammed. Up here to your right when you come in, to where you check your levels of everything. There's your battery. There's your fresh tank. That's the one you can hold down until when your potable water is full. Your black and gray tanks. Here's where you turn on your water heater if hooked up to electric, if hooked up to gas, your water pump if using potable water, your awning light, your slide. We're going to go ahead and extend that. Short slide runs out rather quickly. It's okay to hear that noise at the end. That's the slide mechanism keeping itself from going out too far or coming in too far. I'm going to run your awning out back up so you can see that see how far to run these out you only want to run these out until that flap falls down to 90 degrees and you can see that black bar 
Then you know you're out far enough with your arm. Big bright LED light. Retract to bring it back in. Alright, as we're running that back in, we're going to start walking through the rest of the unit here. Coming over into your kitchen area. Your microwave, self-explanatory. A fan and light for your oven. Stove top. This glass top makes an excellent backsplash. Turn on your panel light. Turn this to light. Hit your spark and there's your flame. So, so I found what you need down here at the bottom of your control. Right there it has TV. AM, FM, Auxiliary, Bluetooth, TV, all right there. That's how you switch it back and forth between the two. Or three or four. Run the rest of your unit. You know, these remove. And that your sofa will jackknife down into a bed. Over here on the wall is your thermostat. Turn that on. That just kicked on. Shut your furnace off. The furnace takes a few minutes to shut off. AC. Shut that off. What this does is it, is it keeps your solar panel from overcharging your battery. That's all this whole thing does is controls it. You go to your battery types. Your amperage is coming in. Your auto ohms, your voltage. The whole purpose of that down here on the floor your 12 volt carbon dioxide detector now, the reason i mentioned this 12 volt is always running off your battery so if you're going to be gone for the day and you don't have anything charging your battery disconnect one of your battery posts to keep this from running your battery down lastly in your bathroom light and fan and gfci with 110 reset Smoke alarm right above your bathroom door. And that about covers everything in here. Do you have a table behind your sofa that you can put out here to eat on? Storage just can be strapped in underneath the bed. Now it's act like we're leaving the campsite. So what I like to do is shut off my living room lights. And then I can look around and see any individual lighting I may have left on. Fan furnace just shut off. It does take just a couple minutes to shut off, and it's not just your unit, it's everybody. All units do that. So I got my lights back on now. I'm gonna go ahead and retract my slide. Again, you want to make sure your drawers out in there are closed, make sure nothing's in the way of impeding this from coming in. Again, it's okay to hear that noise. I'm gonna bring your awning the rest of the way in. Shut off our awning and living room lights and head out of the unit. Again, make sure your exterior door is all the way open before you lift this up so this doesn't catch on it. Put that up in there. Lock that side in. Push this back over. See, there's a button you push down to. Close your exterior door, lock and deadbolt your door. Close this up. Unhook your water. Unhook your cable. I like to start with unhooking the water so you remember. Come over here. Do two things. Open up your low point drain. And lift up on this pressure release valve. That's going to go ahead and get all the water out of there. Hot water. Be careful. It will be hot. Once that's done draining, you can pull your drain down there. Hook up your hitch and head on up to the dump station at the dump station. Take your sewage hose, hook it up, and the first thing you pull is your black tank. After that black tank sounds like it's no longer draining, again, take your water pressure regulator, hook up the hose at the dump station to this black tank flush. Leave that running for a good five minutes with your black handle open, and it's gonna wash out your black tank, get all that nastiness out of there. 
after you got a good washout go ahead and close that up unhook your hose close your black handle and pull your gray handle the gray handle is going to be your cleaning waters your sinks and your showers and you're going to come right here behind your rear stabilizing jack open this up and store your sewage hose inside again we thank you so much for your purchase we hope you guys enjoy this jay feather for many years to come happy camping